Hello and good evening. Welcome again to our Friday night Bible study. And we uh, appreciate all of you for joining us. And our team, our prayer team, just finished praying for all our prayer requests. Uh, because as, as we said, our church believes in the power of prayer. And in fact, we would like to thank all those people, members, and uh, <clears throat> who, who uh, participated and um, just did their part in uh, our annual church annual day of prayer last Sunday. And it's been, a, you know, just awesome, just awesome to, be, to see, you know, all levels of, of generational uh, prayer warriors from, from kid, uh, super senior, uh, you know, just just everyone, businessmen, all, all the prayers that are going, and, and I pray that uh, this would be the uh, a good start for our year. That uh, all of you will feel that people are praying for you. I, it's something when you know, and, and someone comes to you and say, you know what, <clears throat> how are you doing? Because we prayed for you. We prayed for your need. We, we prayed for your sickness. We prayed for your <clears throat> problem. And that's just powerful. And I, I pray that this continuation of our message last Friday um, will help us understand the, the part of prayer that is very important. Last Friday, we studied about uh, the principle in prayer called crying out to God and uh, we have known that you know in the Bible there's a prayer supplication there's calling unto God and there's so many verses regarding crying to God it, 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 it's a it's a sense of prayer where you feel the passion you feel the the uh, the the desperation that if God doesn't answer your prayer you're in trouble and then you cry out to Him like, like someone who has nothing left except God. And sometimes I believe, really, that God brings us to that point in our lives. Sometimes He could even delay His answer so that when we cry out to God, uh, then that's the time that He will show forth His power on our behalf. And uh, last uh, Friday, we, we learned that you can cry out to God when you need the victory in your Christian life. And boy, do we need victory in our Christian life. So many Christians are defeated, uh, li living a, <clears throat> a defeated Christian life. Um, but that's not the, the goal of God for us. God wants us to be victorious. And you can ask God to overcome those, those um, things in your life that hinders your testimony. Uh, those things in your life that hinders you from being used powerfully by God. And also you can cry out to God when, when you want even to increase your faith. Right? Yeah, you can go back to our last Friday uh, program. <clears throat> and you can also cry out to God for blessing like Jabez. You can cry out to God for uh, healing. Healing. And, and, and you know we know that God has different purpose for sickness. But if God's name will be glorified in healing, then you can cry out to God for, uh, for you to receive that healing. And now as we go to our like the conclusion of that message that we started, as our verse said, you know, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And as we all know, if you read the book of James, he's referring to Elijah the prophet who prayed for the rain to stop and it didn't rain for three years and after three years he prayed again and the rain poured and that's a power of prayer so he was used here as an example of um, you know crying out to God and God you know pouring out his power and, and just showing us that he is a living God in the in the Greek the word effective fervent it's actually just one word, and that word is energeo, or <clears throat> energeo. And that's where we get the word energy. That's where we get the word energy. And, and, and that is what we need to see in our prayers today. Um, sometimes 
Christians when they pray, um, not all, but mostly, you see them very, very lame, very, uh, as if prayer is just like, okay, close your eyes, pray, say these words. But through prayer, the one that God hears is a prayer that you call upon God, you cry upon God. Uh, you, you do not go to God and demand what you want, but you go to God and submit, submit yourself to Him. And, and that's what it is. And hey, so much energy in your prayer. And the word uh, avails much is it means make much power available. So when you pray in the energy of God's Spirit, and, and you make much power available, it avails much. It means something. It does something. And, and that's what Christians are, you know, should be known for. In fact, in the early days of Christianity, I told you this before. The Christians were, before they were even called Christians, they were known as the people who call upon their God. They are known for prayers. And and, uh, and I believe nowadays that should go back to that um, identification that Christians must be known as people of prayer. That when they call upon their God, their God answers. So in continuation with our um, um part on crying out to God, there are several things I want to share with you right now. Okay? It is very important and and it is this. Attitude. Attitude. Attitude matters in prayer. It's very important how you approach God. It's very important how you um, your demeanor in, in approaching God. It's very important your heart, your, your whole being, uh, how you are, your attitude matters in prayer. And one of the important um, uh, attitude that we have is that we must have sincerity in our prayers. Um, be real in your prayers. You don't pray so that people will hear how wonderful words you use, powerful words you use when you pray. But you, you pray to God. You don't pray to be heard by man. You pray to be heard by God. And uh, that's why you need sincerity with God. And number one, because... You cannot, you know, um, you cannot live a fake life with God. You cannot fake your words with God. You cannot. God sees the heart. God sees the heart. And uh, <clears throat> the Bible said in Psalms 145, The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. To all who call upon Him in truth. So when you pray, be truthful to the Lord. Um, another verse uh, goes like this in Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. See, that's where you find it. Calling upon God. Attend to my cry. Crying out to God. Give ear to my prayer, which is not, which is not from deceitful lips. So the uh, attitude in coming to the Lord is be honest with God, be truthful with God, be sincere in your prayers. Uh, don't just come to God because you have organized your prayer to the point that, you know, you're so conscious of your, uh, you know, uh, organized prayer. Uh, but sometimes you just have to come to the Lord in agonizing prayer. Agonize. It's a battle between, uh, you know, between your enemy, Satan, who doesn't want you to, to, to have your prayers answered. Now, Give ear, pray, and avoid deceitful lips. And another thing we need to understand is not only sincerity in prayer, but also humility. Humility in prayer. Oh, how important it is when you fall before God, when you pray. The Bible said, He does not forget the cry of the humble. So humility is a, is a big, big thing with God. Uh, it's a realization that you are before your Creator. You're holy. A God who is so righteous, so holy, that, that you cannot play around with God. You cannot play around in His presence. And one thing important when it comes to um, humility, when it comes to humility, 
And the thing is that, you know, if you want to receive the grace of God, and remember, everything comes from the grace of God. Answered prayers come from the grace of God. Any Anything you receive in your life is a gift. It's a grace from God. So God's grace is free. But there's only one requirement. Only one. One and only requirement to receive God's grace. And that's humility. That's humility. He said in James 4, 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. But gives grace to the humble. That's the only requirement he wants. You, you humble your, yourselves before God. If there is, if there is at all any sense, any, any feeling, any, um, you know, uh, identification with pride, uh, your prayers will not be answered. God hates a proudful person. And what is pride? Remember, uh, you don't go to him as a proud person. So what is a proud person? How do you know who or what a proud person is? Well, pride is reserving for ourselves the right to make the final decisions. Actually, when you do this, we, when you do not give room for God to do what he wants, when you do not give room for God to make the final decision for your life, you, you make yourself equal with God. Yes, you make yourself trying to be equal almost with God. Because you're saying to yourself, uh, I have the final say, Lord. Okay, uh, Whether you answer my prayer this way or this way, I have the final say. That is pride. That is pride. And another thing is that pride is building our lives around ourselves. We call it self-centered life. It's all about you. It's all about how you feel when you go to church. It's all about oh, the, the preaching must make you happy. The, the music must sound, be sound to your ear. It's all about you. And sometimes people uh, you know, who are not perfect in their music or pastors who are not perfect in their preaching, but you do not know they're pleasing God in, 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 in what they're doing. They don't have to please you. We don't have to please man. We please God. So pride is building our lives all about you or us, uh, what we want, what we need. Uh, it should be done this way. Uh, you should not be like this because that, not like that. It, it's not, it, that develops pride, folks. And another thing is that pride <clears throat> is believing that our accomplishments and successes are due to what we achieve so you have reached that status in life that in the eyes of men you can call successful. They look up to you. You have people under you. And, 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 and what pride that does is uh, you absorb the praise. You absorb the, the, the um, accolades. Uh, I don't know. That's, you, you, you absorb it in such a way that, hey, I deserve this. For years I've been doing this, and now it's about time I deserve, you know, uh, this this uh, thing that I accomplished, this success, this position in life, this position in <clears throat> in society. I deserve this. So you think that uh, you've reached that point because of your self, your so achievement, when you do not realize that promotion comes from the Lord, and um, you could easily discover that promotion comes to the Lord because even with everything that you did, if God allows you to fall, split second, you're here, and then split second, you're down. Oh, you could just see that in the lives of many of our people in society. Well-known, famous, uh, you know, up there, positionally, then one day you realize they're down. So, <clears throat> not about you. And next is that pride projects a polished image of competence and self-confidence. You know why sometimes when people are so, um, are so in to their prayer with God, 
and you see tears in their eyes, you, they cry. They, you cannot fake it, you know. And some people may fake it, but God listens to those that are not fake. So, and then they weep. They they could not even continue praying. They they stumble on their words because they're so crying out to God, just calling to God, even even just saying one word, you know. And then wasn't able to finish their prayer. And then um, then after praying. And they are the one who apologize and say, I'm sorry, I can't control myself. You don't have to apologize. That heart came out because of your sincere and humble prayer to God. Those around you are the one who should apologize for not praying as you did. What I'm saying is that, you know, we want to project an image of an aura of... Uh, Righteous prayer, you cannot, yeah, that's not an aura, it, it's something within, and uh, it projects, don't project an image of competence, that's why people do not want to be known as weeping and praying, Jeremiah was a weeping prophet, they call him, he's not ashamed of that, and so uh, Proverbs 16 said, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, now be, uh, be careful of that. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. There's a warning. And God's principles always abide. The proud people have to go down. A haughty spirit, it's a sign that, you know, um, <clears throat> a fall is coming. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain him honor. You see, these are God's eternal principle. It, is, it doesn't matter if you live, you know, 1,000 years ago, or, or you live 50 years ago, you live in the 60s, it doesn't matter. God's truth remains, and God's truth will remain 50 years from now, 1,000 years from now, unless, you know, God comes or Jesus comes. Uh, but God hates pride. And also one thing, do not wait for God to be the one to humble you. You could just start humbling yourself before God in spirit, in mind, in heart. <clears throat> and, and, and do not wait for God to be the one to humble you. Sometimes people are so proud. But when God was the one who humbled them, you know, it, 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 don't wait for that. You can right now go before God in humility and say, Lord, it's all about you. It's not about me. Lord, uh, everything I had, everything I achieved, it's because of you. Lord, you gave me this skill, this talent. Just allow me to use it in the, for the time that I am on earth. Lord, I realize my life on earth is short. I mean, just humble yourself before God. Because if you wait for God to be the one to humble you, number one, sometimes it can be painful. Yes, because He will take out from your hands everything that you uh, are holding on to. And you know, when you're holding on to it and it's removed by force, it, it's painful. It's painful. And, and sometimes it's not only painful, but also shameful. Because people around you will, will see how, how God has humbled you. And it's a shame. It's embarrassing. It's, you know, it, people who thought you were okay, people who thought you were so, so uh, godly, and then God humbled you. Telling you, it's shameful. Your friends will see, will see the real you, your 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 family. Okay, it's so shameful, and and your children looking up to you. Uh, but God just brought you down, and for some reason we do not know. But don't wait for that. And it could also be wasteful. It could be wasteful. All the things you've achieved, all the money you've earned, for what? Wasted. Uh, remember the parable of the. A uh, rich man who had a great harvest and he said oh what shall I do I do not have a place to put all my harvest oh this is what I'll do I'll, I'll build a barn and and then you know fill uh, the barn with all my my my, uh, my my harvest and I will say to myself soul drink eat drink and be merry for you have enough supply for many years but God said you fool, tonight your soul shall be required of you. 
then these things that you have earned, these things that you have built, what's this for? Waste. Okay? He thought he has many years when in fact he doesn't even have 24 hours. So, do not wait for God to humble you. Anyway, another thing that we need in prayer is self-examination. Self-examination is important because here you recognize and acknowledge your weaknesses. Again, in our society, the mantra is don't show them your weakness because if you show any sign of weakness, they'll 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 uh, they'll, they'll gang on you. They'll they'll uh, rip the carpet from from before you. Don't show any form of weakness. Well, with God, it's opposite. Recognize your weakness before God. That's important. And, and for that, the only way to do that is you examine yourself. And then, when, when you see that you have uh, burdens, problems, and needs that are greater than your ability to resolve, then, then you realize, wow, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. I'm not as rich as I thought I was. I'm not fin financially capable as I thought I was. I was not as brilliant as I thought I was with all my degree. And then you recognize that you are weak. Why is it important that you examine yourself and realize you are nothing actually? Well, Paul, someone prayed that, and his name is the Apostle Paul. And um, he, when he realized the importance of the thorns that he had in the flesh, that God was not removing and he realized when God said, that's okay, Paul. The, the, the thorn in the flesh is to, for you to realize that you are weak. Okay? Because when you are weak, then I, I am strong. I can show my power through your weakness. When Paul realized that principle, he said in verse 10, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in my reproaches, in needs, in persecutions. And distress us. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because for remember the word for Christ's sake. Okay, being persecuted for Christ's sake, he has need for Christ's sake. The reason is for when I am weak, then I am strong. The strength comes from him, not from me. So it is important that when you come and cry out to God, recognize your weaknesses. Recognize them. Don't don't hide them. Don't try to pretend. Don't try to have an image of, of power and strength when you, you don't really have it. Just that's why you cry out to God to help you. That's why we cry out to God because without God, we are nothing. Okay, uh, he said that like you know like uh, you're the branch, I'm the vine. You're just a branch. So uh, if, if you're not attached to the vine, you are nothing. That's what uh, John 15 said. And finally, not only sincerity, humility, and self-examination, we need unconditional surrender in prayer. Unconditional surrender. <clears throat> you need to realize, that's why you, you cry out to God, because you totally surrender everything to Him. Everything that you are. Everything that you want to be. Everything that you should be. Everything. Total, unconditional surrender to God. That's important when, 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 when people or nations that are at war, they sign the, the surrender treaty, uh, it's unconditional. You don't have the right to ask for anything. Unconditional surrender. Well, where and to what are we to surrender? You are to surrender, number one, that God's ways is always right. Realize that, man, uh, I tried everything that I can, but I want to do it my way. And now I surrender that God's way is always perfect. I don't have to understand everything in God's ways. His ways are higher than my ways in the same way that heaven and earth is, is so different. But, Lord, your way is always perfect. Your timing is always right. Uh... The, the, the ending is always for your glory. So God's ways. Surrender to God's ways. Secondly, surrender to God's word. Obey His word. 
obey His commandment. There's a purpose why God commanded those things. Don't you think so? Don't you think that there's a reason why God gives all those commandments and 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 and, and orders? And, and when Jesus gave what uh, in His beatitude, look at the commands of Jesus there. Thirty-nine commandments, meaning. We don't realize it, but those were commands. Love one another, pray for one another, be humble. Those are commands. Um, submit to God's word, God's ways, and finally submit to God's will. Submit to God's will. <clears throat> we may not like God's will, but submit to God's will. That's the only way to, to go through this life. That's all, the only way to see God's what God is doing in our world. His way, from his perspective. There was a, when the nation of Israel was was you know um, chastised by God for not doing what God wants to do, and, and their prayers were hindered. And Isaiah, uh, you know, God used Isaiah to bring them back to God. And so when God told them to to do these things, so you will be right with God. And at the end, this is what God said if they, if they uh, comply. And this is what God said in Isaiah fifty eight. Then, okay, then, meaning when you do those things that I want you to do, when you do this God's way, when you do it my way, God said, when you do it uh, according to what I say, this is what will happen. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, see, and he will say, here I am, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your meats, the pointing of the finger, and the speaking of wickedness, you know, all those things that you do, I'm here for you. When you cry, I'm here for you. Not a second delay, not a second early, just on time when you call upon the name of the Lord. Again, thank you for being with us. If you're listening and if you do not have Jesus in your heart as your Savior, why not? Why not? Cry out to God and call upon the name of the Lord. Believe in your heart that Jesus is the only Savior who can save you. And nothing else and no one else. Open your heart to Jesus. Thank you and good night. And God bless.